Hello everybody, Mobius Y here with another video for Stellaris Console Edition, and today is the day with Megacorp officially launched. Those of us enjoying Stellaris on consoles can now experience new corporate empires, new empire civics, the Caravaneers, creating our own ecumenopolis worlds, and of course, new megastructures. As it happens, this video is about just that, megastructures in Stellaris Console Edition. This includes all the brand new megastructures from Megacorp, as well as the older ones from Utopia. Now I know not all Stellaris Console Edition players have all DLCs or even any of them, for, so for the sake of those who haven't decided to purchase any DLCs, I'm hoping that little videos like this one can convince you to try them out for yourselves. Before we continue, I'd like to remind everyone that tonight at 9pm Eastern Standard Time I will be streaming Stellaris Console Edition with the new Megacorp Expansion DLC and starting a brand new game with a corporate empire. I'll need your help to create this empire at the start of the stream, so come by my Twitch channel when I begin the stream and we'll spend the first while together having fun and creating our first galactic mega corporation. As I said, the stream starts at 9pm Eastern Standard Time and the link for my Twitch channel is provided in the description below. Hope to see you there. Mega Structures. These colossal construction projects are true galactic marvels, and completing even one will make you the envy of every spacefaring civilization. In total, there are 10 megastructures available for your empire, provided you have all the required DLC. For this video, we'll be focusing on the 8 major multi-stage megastructures from both Megacorp and Utopia. Habitats and gateways will be topics for a separate video sometime in the future. The 4 major megastructures from the Utopia DLC are the Science Nexus, Dyson Sphere, Century Array, and Ringworld. And the four megastructures from Megacorp are the Interstellar Assembly, Mega Art Installation, Matter Decompressor, and Strategic Coordination Center. Despite being from two separate DLC expansions, all these megastructures have the same requirements. You must first research the Mega Engineering technology in the Engineering Tree, and select the Galactic Wonders Ascension perk. All multi-stage megastructures also start off with a construction site, which you can create by selecting a construction ship and selecting Build Megastructure from the Manage tab or by moving the cursor over a stellar object and pressing the A button to bring up the Build Megastructure command. Each construction site takes 1200 days to be completed and will cost your empire 300 influence and 5000 alloys. Let's start with the new megastructures from the Megacorp DLC, as I'm sure most people viewing this video are interested in the new content from our latest expansion. First up is the Interstellar Assembly. This structure acts as a hub for negotiations throughout the entire galactic community and closely monitors the station's diplomatic activity. After completing the construction site, this project has four stages, each costing 10,000 alloys and requiring 1,200 days time to build. Each stage of the Interstellar Assembly adds 25% immigration pull and increases all AI Empire's opinion of you. When completed, the Interstellar Assembly creates 100% immigration pull and has a plus 50 opinion modifier for any AI empires in the galaxy. The Interstellar Assembly must be constructed in your capital system and orbiting a star. If diplomacy and peaceful coexistence are core societal values to your empire, as well as cohabitating with other species, the Interstellar Assembly is the megastructure project for you. Next we have the Strategic Coordination Center. This facility is the hub of military strategy and communications for your fleets and starbases. Once the construction site has finished, the Strategic Coordination Center has three stages needing 15,000 alloys and 2400 days of time to complete. Each stage adds plus 50 naval capacity, plus 5% to ship sublight speed, plus 2 starbase capacity, and plus 4 maximum defense platforms to your starbases. This totals to plus 150 naval capacity, plus 15% ship sublight speed, plus 6 starbase capacity, and plus 12 maximum defense platforms with the Strategic Coordination Center has been fully built. This megastructure has to be orbiting a star, black hole, pulsar, or neutron star when constructed. If you prefer flexing your military might on your rivals, or even fortifying your own territory with strong defenses, the Strategic Coordination Center might be just the construction project for your empire. Now the third megastructure in Megacorp is the Matter Decompressor. Using advanced gravitational technologies, a Matter Decompressor pulls mass directly from a black hole and smelts it into raw resources for your empire to manufacture. Upon finishing the construction site, this project has four stages, each costing 12,500 alloys and taking 2,400 days to build. With each stage of the Matter Decompressor, the structure extracts an additional 250 minerals from the black hole where it is stationed. A complete matter decompressor adds 1,000 minerals per month to your empire's production, and also benefits from the production targets and omnifarious acquisition edicts as well, causing it to produce 1,530 minerals each month. 
As indicated above, the matter decompressor must be built in orbit of a black hole. If your empire is in need of raw resources or you just want to increase your output of minerals, the matter decompressor is exactly what you'll need. And finally, from the Megacorp DLC, we have the Mega Art Installation. This massive museum puts the spirit and culture of your empire on display for everyone in the galaxy to see. After building the construction site, the Mega Art Installation has three stages, with each requiring 15,000 alloys and 2,400 days of building time. Completing each stage adds plus 100 unity generation and plus 5% amenities produced from jobs throughout your empire, with the final stage generating 300 unity and plus 15% amenities production. If that wasn't enough, the unity production also benefits from various unity bonuses in your empire, such as the Patron of the Arts modifier you can get from the Artisan Troop. This particular megastructure must also be constructed orbiting a star, black hole, pulsar, or neutron star. If your empire wants to put its art and culture on the stage and you wish to crank out a significant amount of unity each month to unlock traditions and activate unity ambitions, the Mega Art installation is the structure for you. Now let's move on to the old classics, the mega structures from the Utopia expansion DLC. Just like with Megacorp, this DLC includes four multi-stage mega structures, and these were the first mega structures introduced to us in the game. Let's start with the Dyson Sphere. This massive metallic polyhedron encompasses an entire star to capture its energy for raw power. It has five stages after the construction site, starting with the frame and then adding more solar collection panels. Each stage costs 10,000 alloys and requires 2400 days time to complete. Once the solar panels have started being constructed, each stage of the Dyson Sphere generates 250 energy credits per month for your empire. A complete Dyson Sphere will produce 1000 energy credits per month, which can be increased to 1200 energy credits by activating the Capacity Boosters Edict. Since this structure completely blocks out the light and energy from a star, it cannot be constructed in a system with habitable worlds. It also must be constructed around a unary star, with no other stars in the system. If your empire struggles to maintain enough power and energy for its buildings and space stations, the Dyson Sphere could be just what you're looking for. Next up we have the Science Nexus, my personal favorite. This colossal construction furthers the pursuit of science and technological mastery by housing thousands of researchers in its labs. Once you have finished its construction site, there are three building stages for the Science Nexus with each stage producing plus 100 science in all three branches per month and a plus 5% bonus to overall research speed. A fully realized Science Nexus produces 300 science for each field and increases total research speed by 15%. There is also the possibility of having an event occur that increases the Nexus's production of science by an additional plus 50 per month for each field of research. The Science Nexus can be constructed in orbit around any planetary body in any kind of star system, but not orbiting a star itself. If your empire values technological superiority and the pursuit of knowledge amongst the cosmos, then consider building your own Science Nexus. Our third megastructure from the Utopia DLC is the Ring World. Built as a massive artificial habitat, the Ring World has multiple zones for your people to colonize and live their lives on, as the structure itself is built encircling an entire star. Upon building its construction site, the Ring World has five stages before it is fully completed. The first stage is the Ring World's frame, which costs 10,000 alloys and takes 3,200 days to complete. The frame itself is so massive that any planetary bodies in the star system are consumed and used as resources for the frame's construction. The remaining four stages each cost another 10,000 alloys and 2,400 days of construction time. Once a ring world section has been completed, it acts as a size 50 habitable world with 100% habitability for all organic species in the galaxy. This allows each section of the ring world to easily house over 100 pops and provide enough jobs for all of them to produce resources for your empire. If your people require more living space or you want a nice comfortable artificial ecosystem for any Xeno to live and thrive, the ring world might be exactly what you needed. And finally, we have the fourth megastructure from Utopia and eighth megastructure in the entire game, the Century Array. This massive observatory and sensor suite provides unparalleled strategic information about everything you could possibly want to know in the galaxy. After completing its construction site, the Century Array has four stages to complete with each stage costing 10,000 alloys and needing 1,200 days worth of building time. Each stage adds plus 20 hyperlanes to the Array's sensor range, with the final stage's sensors covering the entire galaxy. The Century Array must be constructed in orbit of a star, black hole, pulsar, or neutron star. 
is spying on your allies and enemies alike while keeping tabs on any fleet activity in space sounds like your dream come true, then the Sentry Array is definitely the megastructure you'll want. One final note to end this video. It is possible to reduce the construction times for each stage of these megastructures. There are three bonuses to construction time available, with each bonus increasing megastructure construction speed by 50%. By selecting the Master Builder's Ascension perk, activating the Living Metal Mega Construction Edict, and activating the Architectural Renaissance Unity Ambition Edict, your megastructures will have a 150% bonus to their construction speed. Since megastructures are so valuable, these bonuses to their construction speed are also valuable and should not be ignored without good reason. While working on this video in post-production, I did in fact realize that all the construction times I'd given earlier were with the Master Builder's Ascension perk active, so do be aware that if you do not have that perk selected, the time to build each section of these megastructures will take even longer. And that's it! That is every multi-stage megastructure available to us in Stellaris Console Edition, up to and including the release of the Megacorp DLC. As you can see, each one has its own special use and can be prioritized depending on the type of empire you're playing to further enhance your journey amongst the stars. Leave a comment down below stating which megastructure is your personal favorite. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up, and don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more Stellaris Console Edition content. The goal of 2021 is to try and hit 10,000 subscribers by the end of December, so the best things you can do to help are to click that red subscribe button and share my videos with friends and colleagues whom you think might also enjoy watching. Maybe my content can help convince those who have not yet played Stellaris Console Edition to purchase the game and try it out for themselves. Don't forget to check out the links in the description below. If you'd like to become a part of the Greater Stellaris community, then join the official Stellaris Discord channel. There is a big section for console edition players like myself to talk about the game, discuss strategies, and even set up multiplayer games together. You'll also find a link to my Twitch channel where I stream Stellaris Console Edition at least once per week, typically on Tuesdays. And as a reminder, I'll be streaming the new Megacorp DLC tonight at 9pm Eastern Standard Time. These days I'm streaming four times a week, so follow my channel and come on over to see what I have going on live. You'll also find a link to my Twitter feed, give me a follow there as I post important announcements all the time and it's a great way to keep in touch with me. Last but not least, there is also a link to my own personal Discord channel for fans of my content to freely join. It's not mandatory, but if you want to take part in the occasional community events such as voting on which games I play on my stream, then that is the place to be. Thanks very much for watching, this is Mobius Y in Stellaris Console Edition, signing off for now, and I'll be back with more videos in the near future.